like grab my shirt and he like did this to me. Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. My name is Josiah. My loader today is Maverick. And just to give us some context, those islands behind us are the islands of Round and Bois Blanc. Now most of what you see there is Bois Blanc, but the little bit that's closest to us, that's Round Island. Now, the reason I bring this up is Round Island is one mile away from where we're standing right now. That context helps you understand this cannon. The maximum range of this cannon would be one mile. So if we were to load up 20 ounces of corn grain black powder, stuff in that six pound cannonball and touch it off, we'd be able to shoot all the way out to Round Island. Now, this in particular is a model 1841 six pound smooth bore field gun. Now every one of those words means something, and if you want to ask me about them all individually at the end, there will be a section for questions. But the important one for this conversation is the model year, model 1841. So, reason that's important, the men that we represent served here at the fort in the 1880s. Now that means this cannon, by the time the men of Company E were serving here and firing it, would have been 40 years old. That's quite antiquated technology, 40 year old firearm in your fort. Not to mention, it's a field gun, not a fortress gun. So there's a question here, why is this artillery piece on these walls? The answer lies in the fact that this fort for the last 20 years of its history was the headquarters of a national park. We were not involved in combat here in the later stages of the fort. We had had a peaceful border with Canada for over 70 years and we were the headquarters of the nation's second national park. So, a cannon like this would suffice perfectly fine for what the men of Company E were doing here, which was regular drill work, some work on the National Park, and firing off the occasional salute shot. So a salute shot means that we're not actually sending anything to Round Island, we're not firing these cannons in anger, we are firing them in celebration. So a salute shot is just a blank, makes a large noise, just like a regular cannon would, just doesn't propel any munitions. They would have been firing these for all sorts of holidays, Memorial Day, which back then they would have called Decoration Day, as well as a national salute on the 4th of July. That's 38 salute shots chained together. One shot for each state in the Union at that time. So, we are gonna be firing off a salute shot for all of you today to continue that tradition of celebration. Back in the day, tourists might have been able to see the 6.30, but we're gonna be firing off the 11 o'clock, along with many others throughout the day, to give you a taste of this tradition. So there's only one thing that I have to do other than talk to all of you to load and prime this cannon, which is plug this little hole out the back with my thumb. This is called a thumb stall. I'm covering what is known as a touch hole. So he is now going to take a tool known as a gunner's worm and scour the piece. He's gonna slide that down the barrel, give it a good twist, and then pull it out. Those teeth at the end are hopefully grabbing onto any loose debris that is in this cannon. And it looks like we are clean. So. Now that we know this is empty, we could, in theory, censor our black powder, but if we did that, we wouldn't know if there was any flames still in here from last firing, burning embers and sort. You don't want to load, that, load any black powder into a cannon that's still hot from the last firing. So we are going to take a tool known as a wet sponge and run that down the barrel. The introduction of this moisture should put out the flames, but with the help of my thumb stall, he is also able to create a vacuum, which you should be able to hear collapse when he removes the tool. So, right here. There we go. So now we know this piece is empty and it is doused. There's no flames, no embers. So we can safely load our historically inaccurate tin foil charge. <laughs> so originally they would have used a thing known as muslin cloth, but that smolders and burns and falls on Marquette Park, so we use tin foil. Now he is inserting that into the barrel and using the other end of that wet sponge, the ramrod, to make sure that it's fully inserted down where the touch hole is. We actually manipulate this charge after it's loaded through this touch hole to get it ready for priming. So now that that's all loaded up, we can roll this cannon into place. Now this piece weighs roughly 1,500 pounds, but with these big, big field gun wheels, it is fairly easy to maneuver. That's why they would have had those wheels on there. So, the priming process is a two-step process. The first one, we take this tool known as a gimlet, which we also sometimes use as a gunner's pick. You might see us do that later. To make sure there is a hole stabbed in that tinfoil. We run that down the touch hole, poke a hole through the tinfoil, allows access to the black powder to light it off. 
So he makes sure there's a good bunch in there. We don't want any tinfoil in the way. With tinfoil in the way, you end up having a hang fire or a misfire, and we don't want those. So now that we have that hole, we just need to insert our friction primer. That is the device that ignites the cannon. So that's essentially a tube filled with black powder that just connects the charge up through that touch hole to the open air. That tube is then capped with a chemical known as mercury fulminate. It's a friction sensitive chemical invented in the 1820s. And that friction is given by a pin that when pulled ignites the entire charge. So he has finished inserting that right there in the touch hole. You can see possibly the little peng hanging off. And he's now going to attach a lanyard for safe and easy firing to ignite this. So this is what I like to remind people. This is a real cannon loaded with five ounces of corn grain black powder. It can make quite a sound. I will be plugging an ear. You feel free to join me or you can take out a phone and record a video. That depends on your personal priorities. Ready? Fire! So, thank you so much for coming up to Fort Mackinac. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any questions, feel free to come up and watch. We actually have a friction primer that we must, must remove, so you'll see us use that gimlet as a gunner's pick. If not, feel free to explore. At 11.30, there will be a tour group starting down by the guardhouse. That's right by the main entrance where most of you probably came in. That tour runs for about 20 minutes. It's called the People of Fort Mackinac. <laughs> 